Welcome to the Weekly Show. I'm Pat O'Meal, and the Weekly Show is a window into your own community. It's good to reboot the Weekly Show. We're taking over the time slot from our other show, The Shore Show. And since we air in Union County, who better to have as a guest as my buddy, the mayor of Linden, Richard Grabanka. Richard, welcome back. Well, thank you for having me here, Pat. And this, this thing's moving a little bit on me there when I was touching the desk. Richard, you know, in preparation for your appearance here, and you haven't been here, I guess, about three, four years. Four years, three years. Uh, something right. like that. I decided to take a ride through Linden. Now, I had a business in the old days on Linden down by Style Street. So mm -hmm. I want to see how many difference, how big a difference it has been in four years. It's not the same old Linden anymore down there. No. You've done, you know, and I'm not blowing smoke. You've done a remarkable job there. You, I don't know how many jobs you must have created, but there's new businesses everywhere. There's shopping malls. The airports are, the airports are shopping mall. Wood Avenue, there's all new business. There's all new housing. It, it's activity everywhere. Well, yeah, thank you, Pat, for that. Uh, Linden is getting a rebirth economically. Uh, as you know, the old Linden of the General Motors, the DuPonts, the Cyanamids, uh, the Tencos, the Gordons Gin, they're all gone now. And, and now we're getting a rebirth with uh, shopping centers and, and industrial parks. And uh, I'm very excited about it because uh, it, it, it's been rough the last five years or so with the economic downturn. Well, isn't that when you became the That's mayor, a, basically? I couldn't, been, I couldn't have been the worst <laughs> time to be the mayor. A year after I became mayor, the whole national economy <laughs> went down. <laughs> well, but you, we're, we're rebounding now. Now, I'm a Jersey City guy. The studio's here in Jersey City. I do a show called The Jersey City Show. There are so many parallels between Jersey City and Linden. But really, if I want to compare Linden, I would go more to North Bergen on how you develop and how you keep industrial into one section, residential to the other. And you, really, it's amazing how much of a boom you got going on. Well, on business-wise and development, jobs must be you know, readily available there. Well, jobs are starting to become readily available. And one of the big ones that I'm super excited about is the Goodman Bircher project you see behind you. This this is a great looking warehouse. It doesn't even look like a warehouse. No, it, 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 again, Goodman Bircher is the second largest reinvestment trust company in the world. And they decided that they want to break into the North American market. And the reason they want to break into the North American market is because of the raising of the Bayonne Bridge and the widening of the Panama, Panama Canal. Canal. We're in an ideal location, three miles from Port Newark, Elizabeth, New Jersey Turnpike, Garden State Parkway, Route 1 and 9. So they have purchased 143 acres of the jo old General Annaline and Film property, which is totally cleaned up, and they're going to put five major warehouses such as that on There's going to be five of these? Five of them wow. are on 143 acres. And if you notice, the, the, the warehouses are more like a corporate park than a warehouse. And their philosophy is to have their clerks, their lawyers, their, their human resources attached to each building so that it's one functioning building rather than having five warehouses and corporation, uh, corporate centers. Everything's under one roof. Everything's together. How did, you, how did you draw these people to Linden? I romanced them for about a year and a half. Uh, putting, on, to, putting on the municipal charm, <laughs> huh? Try to get them to be very excited, and they are. And as a matter of fact, we just had site plan approval, and they're going to be breaking ground, they anticipate, by the beginning of next year. How many jobs are attached to a complex when all five of the warehouses are done? That's the exciting part. We're talking about two to 3,000 full-time jobs. And let's not forget the multiplier effect. The multiplier, people are going to want to go to a restaurant for lunch or dinner. They're going to want to take their dry cleaning someplace. They're going to want to get their car fixed. So that multiplier effect is even going to increase well, that, more that jobs. Well, that comes out like, uh, Governor Christie always says this. With the, as I do the uh, Shore Show, where Governor Christie says, you know, every dollar spent on tourism comes back to us three times. Exactly. Pretty much the same thing. Every dollar they pay in a paycheck, the guy goes and he buys a newspaper, he goes to uh, dinner, Absolutely. he rents an apartment or buys a condominium in Linden. So that money keeps coming back and back into Linden. It's recycled. Now, are these jobs full now and they're being transferred, or are these jobs that are gettable for the people of Linden? No, they're gettable for the people of Linden. As a matter of fact, I've got a commitment that all things being equal, they will they will hire Linden residents first. All right, so they're not transferring jobs from elsewhere. No, These no. are oh, this is amazing. You're going to have so many jobs available. You're going to be like an employment hub there. But this is just one of the many you got, and there's a bunch of small businesses. Yep. Like just going just going on Wood Avenue, you see all sorts of small businesses. 
the airport, you, you got a shopping mall in there, it looks like. Yep, we have a shopping mall at the Linden Airport, uh, uh, but we, it's air called Airport Plaza. But what I'm really excited about, Pat, is, is our downtown area now, Wood Avenue. Uh, as you said, uh, you've been on Wood Avenue oh, before. Yeah, uh, we do have all our stores basically filled, but what's going to be a, a spark that ignites an explosion on our Wood Avenue shopping district is density housing. Right now, we have Capadagli Builders, George Capadagli, $47 million commitment to build right next to our train station 176 apartments geared towards young professionals. Now, these young professionals, when they go to New York, come home from New York and Newark, they're not going to want to cook supper. They're going to want restaurants. They're going to want quality stores. Chinese food. And uh, no, more than uh, Chinese, Chinese food. More than Chinese. Oh, some Chinese. You got Chinese restaurants? Oh, what we is got Chinese plenty of them. Food? Well, you're a transit uh, uh, hub now, isn't it? Uh, transit transit village. Yeah, we're a transit village. It took us four years. My predecessor failed twice in getting it. Uh, it took us four years, but we're transit village. We just got a million dollars from the Department of Transportation to beautify the area around our train station, which again goes hand in hand with our development. Uh, across the other side of the train station, a block away, we got condominiums being built. They built 48 condominiums. There's only one left, so they're going to break. They're breaking they ground sold, for 48. They more. sold 47. Yeah, they yeah. guarantee they're they, going to have a sequel uh, development then. So again, my whole concept is density housing around the train station for young professionals. But I got a funny story to tell you. Uh, when I was cutting a ribbon for these 48 condominiums, uh, I was making small talk with, uh, with one of the individuals that bought the property. And I, he, I found out he lived in Brooklyn and worked in Manhattan. So I says, you lived in Brooklyn, worked in Manhattan. Why did you buy a condominium in Linden, New Jersey? He says, number one, it's far cheaper to live in Linden, New that Jersey. That was one of the reasons Brooklyn. I was about to give you. I'm surprised and Barbara Streisand hasn't moved over. <laughs> and number two, he says, I could be in my job in Manhattan faster from Linden because it's a direct route on New Jersey Transit than I can from Brooklyn to Manhattan. Yeah, I tell you, so there's, there. there's an exodus from uh, New York. You know, Brooklyn, oh, yeah. Staten Island seems to be doing all right. Brooklyn, Manhattan, those people are coming because Mayor Full up here in Jersey City is going out of his way to attract them. You are even getting them without going into well, Brooklyn to attract them. I, I'll tell you, the mayor did a great job on downtown where the Colgate's area was. I mean, I, I go down there and, and all the young professionals in the buildings built. Uh, but I'm going to try to steal some of them from him. Well, I, I don't blame you. And, it, and you're, you're cheaper than Jersey City? Your rents yep. are far cheaper. We're going to break for commercial. You're watching the weekly show. My guest is the mayor of Linden, Richie Grabanka. We'll be right back. Consumer Carpets, 3408 Kennedy Boulevard in the Jersey City Heights, your one-stop store for residential and commercial floor treatments. Carpeting, linoleum, tiles, laminates, hardwood flooring, area rugs, remnants, all the major brands, all in stock. Free estimates, same-day installation. Consumer Carpets, it's savings, selection, and installation. Credit and debit cards accepted, financing available. Consumer Carpets, pricing to fit your budget, installation to fit your schedule. Visit us on the net at ConsumerCarpets.com. Consumer Carpets, 201-792-2712. Burns Brothers, Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, Jersey City. Hudson County's only monument maker, serving all faiths and cemeteries. Design studio and launch inventory on site. Cemetery inscriptions and custom orders welcome. Burns Brothers, Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, just south of Seacorkers Road. Craftsmanship that will last for all eternity. Burns Brothers, Jersey City, Albert H. Hopper, North Arlington. Visit us on the net. Jersey City Medical Center consistently receives the highest hospital ranking and rating in New Jersey. Number one overall hospital in the state. Number one for high-risk pregnancy. Number one for neurological disorders. Number one for stroke. Magnet Award for Nursing Excellence. A for Hospital Safety. What makes the Jersey City Medical Center the number one hospital in the state? Top-rated, award-winning medical professionals. You can see today at the Jersey City Medical Center. Make the number one hospital your first choice, the Jersey City Medical Center. We're back. You're watching the weekly show. My guest is the mayor of Linden, Richie Grabanka. Richie, second segment. I, I, it, I cannot e emphasize how surprised I was in how Linden looked. Wood Avenue is a great example. I used to go up and down Wood Avenue every day. Mm -hmm. My shop used to be where uh, International was. Oh, yeah, International and, uh, Harvester. Yep, that's where my shop was. 
So I'd go up and down Wood Avenue all the time, stopped in the Driftwood, had a couple of beers every mm -hmm. so often, did, you know, stopped and bought office supplies there. It is truly night and day. You mentioned before there's no vacancies. I didn't see any vacancies on Wood Avenue. Right. So I'm looking at the quality of life issues, and first thing I notice is the roads. You're up to date on the roads. It's not all pothole ridden. Uh, you know, they have to wave around like that going down there. The garbage cans were empty. Benches were functional. They were clean. The streets were clean. That's the first sign I look at of a successful administration, the streets. It's not pothole riddle. It's not full of garbage. Curbs were painted. Garbage cans are empty. That, that, that's, you know, all the jobs they're bringing, which is great. But that's really the nuts and bolts of being a mayor, taking care of the city. I'm big on potholes. I, I can't stand potholes. You know, I, I don't know how many times I do tie rod now. Mayor Full up here in Jersey City has put a whole pothole team together. He's been fighting <laughs> we, them. But we that winter kicked our butts yeah, we, here. We need, <laughs> we need a pothole team. We did well, put one together, too. Uh, again, winter was cruel throughout the state of New Jersey, and we had our fair share of potholes. But again, uh, we You're take, on top of them. Yeah, You're we on take top pride of them. in it. We fix our roads. Uh, uh, we make sure our shopping center is clean. Uh, and again, uh, Linden again is getting into a rebirth. Uh, we're finally getting the revenues that we so sorely missed yeah. with this national economy. Yeah, it's definitely a renaissance yeah. going. That's, I'm, I'm so impressed, especially going down one and nine. You see so many businesses that weren't there just a short time ago, three, four, five years ago. These businesses weren't there. Yeah, uh, well, one of, one of the perfect businesses is uh, the old GAM plan, 108 acres. Uh, on Route 1 and 9. Uh, again, that, that is now being built by Duke Realty. Uh, they're building a 500,000 square foot warehouse. They're also building a 144,000 square foot warehouse. And again, geared towards uh, the widening of the Panama Canal. But in the front, we're going to have retail commercial uh, with various stores. Uh, what kind of stores you got coming in? Do you know well, any of the names? What kind of stores we got coming in on, on, on the Duke property? A super Walmart is going to come into the into the property. Do they actually build them, or they just drop them in? Because I never seen one on the construction. <laughs> well, they just gonna, like a McDonald's. You never one. see a McDonald's on the construction. They just appear. You're Same thing with one. Walmart. Uh, they, but the super Walmart's going to come in. Once the super Walmart comes in, then there's going to be other anchor st uh, other well, stores. That's got to be two, three hundred jobs with a super Walmart. Mm, absolutely. And oh. again, we're talking about once it's completely built out, the rateables will be five to seven million dollars. So again, we're getting to retail development there. Across the street, we had a Kmart and a Sears. This building has been vacant for about three years. And I never realized how enormous that building was. Yeah, it's big, you know, Sears and Kmart, pretty yeah, big stores. They, they subdivided it. And on November 3rd, we're going to have a groundbreaking at that, that plaza. It's called Linden Commons. And we're going to have a, a TJ Maxx anchor store. We're going to have a Sprint. We're going to have a K Jewelers. We're going to have a Buffalo Wild Wings. We're going to have a, a Hitachi Grill. Uh, and we're going to have a Blink, which is supposedly a, a uh, fitness center. And then there's two other vacant stores. So all, all them stores in just one Kmart or, or Sears building. There's got to be another couple amazing. hundred jobs attached yep. to that. Uh, that's why, again, yeah, You're not going to have an unemployment are, rate in uh, well, Linden. Well, I would love to have that problem. Yeah, I said with all these jobs coming in, and these are real jobs. This is this yep. is happening. This, this is isn't happening. smoke and mirrors. This isn't a promise. This is happening as we speak. So these jobs will be coming available in the next year or so. Yep, November well, third ribbon cutting. That, yeah. That's something really to, to hang your hat on. That's that's a yep. hell of an accomplishment. Because many of the municipalities, their old industrial sites, we do it here in Jersey City. They become residential buildings. They become condominiums. Once you do that, there's no jobs involved no, anymore. Right. When you're creating jobs, shopping centers, warehouse, light assembly, industrial like this, that's one way of keeping your crime in line too. Because if people are working, they're not going into a life of crime. And that's one of the one of the issues many many of the major cities like Jersey City has. We have a lot of condominiums, we don't have a lot of jobs. You're gonna be a job generator out there in Linden. Well definitely uh, we are and another issue I'm very excited about Pat is just last week, I met with DuPont. Again, DuPont is right next to GAF. They're 98 acres of property. They just cleaned it up with no further action from the, from the DEP. What they got that's a selling point is they got 300,000 linear, I'm sorry, 3,000 linear feet of bulkhead on the Arthur Kill. 
which is going to be a tremendous selling point for that property. They're putting it up to the market, and they tell me that they intend to have it sold by the end of the year. And so God only knows how many jobs will be attached when that. There's going to be more funny. jobs. It just dawns on me. Last time we were doing an interview, you, you were bummed out over losing the incinerator. So where did it go? Did it go to Ros Roselle? Where it, when it, it you went, lost all it the money went from? to Rawway, yeah. <laughs> you went and, to Rawway, that's right. And <laughs> uh, three, three blocks across you the got city it. line. Then, so then, they get all the benefits, and we still get the, the detriments you got, for it. Well, what's interesting, you know, that you, you would have received all the benefits, and you were Absolutely. bummed out you didn't get that. Absolutely. Now, look, here we are, like four years later. You're not even you're not even concerned about that well, anymore. You have so much going on. Can't cry over spilt milk, Pat. And the other thing, you know, I was looking at. I went on the website. I'm looking at the uh, budgets over the years. You keep your budget pretty pretty stable we, we there. We try to. We try to. We got a hundred million dollar budget. Uh, we're trying to we're trying to hold down the taxes again. It's been a little rough because of all the revenue we've lost over the years. Listen, yeah, I think that's going to change in the upcoming Absolutely. years. But it's almost impossible to keep it down. You, you can't control no. the, uh, the the health benefits, uh, pensions, you know, salaries. It's almost impossible. But when I look at how your budgets, I looked at from I think it was 2010. I think you were 95 million right. a year up to today. Uh, you, I'm sure you know uh, Senator Nick Sacco, the mayor yes. of North Bergen. Your budgets pretty much follow his in an increase. Nick Sacco, the same as you. You're, you're not going to come in, well, it's a $15 million increase. It's a 12% increase. Well, That's not how you worked it. And the people in the city, they must appreciate that because they're not getting beat over the head with some huge tax bill every year. It, it just went up moderately, I don't know, percentage-wise, what is it, one, two percent maybe yeah, it went up? It, it, it's gone up a few times, a little bit bigger than I would like, but again, as you say, there's certain budget uh, constraints that you can't yep. control. You can't but, control them. Uh, again, uh, I'm excited because we're going to really stabilize our taxes uh, in, in, in the future as these projects start uh, getting completed. I was talking to one of uh, your... your uh, a fellow mayor's um, Bill Aker down in Seaside. Mm -hmm. And little Seaside, little borough of Seaside, you know, they're dependent on that ball. It's the same thing he's talking about, the expenses with the health care and police Absolutely. salaries and the union contracts. These things were negotiated and you have to live with them. All right, we're going to break for commercial. The mayor of Lyndon Richard Gabonker and I will be back. Keep watching. It takes more than a state-of-the-art medical facility to make a great hospital. It takes a team of dedicated medical professionals that's the Jersey City Medical Center, Hudson County's number one hospital. Medical teams consisting of New Jersey's top doctors, magnet award-winning nurses, and accomplished hospital associates, all committed to your good health. That's what you have at the Jersey City Medical Center. Make Hudson County's number one hospital your first choice. The Jersey City Medical Center, on the web at libertyhealth.org. Meineke Car Care, Jersey City, two locations, 700 Tunley Avenue, half mile north of County Road, 1613 Kennedy Boulevard, just north of Bayonne. Meineke, bumper to bumper car care. Brakes, exhaust, oil change, diagnostic, wheel alignment, batteries, CV joints, shocks, and so much more. First rate service at a price you can afford. All major cards accepted. Apply for a Meineke card. Meineke, Jersey City. Stop by, let Sammy check your brakes for free. Plaza Auto Body, 700 Tunley Avenue in Jersey City your local collision specialist, body and fender repair, on-site oven-baked paintwork, fiberglass repair experts, custom and classic car restoration, all insurance is welcome, 24-hour towing available, licensed by the state of New Jersey, Plaza Auto Body, 700 Tunley Avenue, 201-222-3050. Plaza Auto Body, your bumper to bumper buddy. Panapinto Properties, Jersey City. Shaping the workplace with state-of-the-art office space and an address your company desires. Building residences that define your home environment. Adjacent to all modes of transportation. On-site parking available. The right address, the right lease. 201-521-9000 or visit on the web at panapintoproperties.com. Panapinto Properties, building Jersey City for everyone. Newport, the luxury waterfront community on the Hudson River, offers a quality of life you deserve in 10 high-rise rental towers with amenities such as the on-site Newport Path Subway, light rail and ferry service, Newport Town Square, three playgrounds, dog run, upscale restaurants, retail giants like Sears, JCPenney, Macy's, and Target. Morton Williams Supermarket is just outside your front door. 
A health and fitness club, spa, skating rink, and medical facilities are also on site. NewportNJ.com Enjoy the New York skyline from Newport Town Square. Manhattan is just one path stop away or quick ride through the Holland Tunnel. Nursery and private elementary schools all on site. 12 screen movie theater at the Newport Center Mall. Want to visit Newport? Stay at the Western or Marriott Hotel. Go to NewportNJ.com for details. Newport has luxurious towers, great restaurants, shopping, New York skyline views, schools, playgrounds, a marina and yacht club, gym, spa, fine wine, fine living. It's incredible. It's you. NewportNJ.com. Newport. Live like you want. Well, back. Welcome to the weekly show. It's a window into your own community, especially if your community is Linden. My guest is the mayor of Linden, Richie Grabanka. Richie, it's our last segment. Um, we were talking between the commercials, the Social Justice Center. Yes. Yes. Talk to me. I'll now, as I said, you're going to tweet out of this? Is this what the no, social no, part no, no. is? This, what do you got? This is a serious vision I have that, uh, that I would like to come to fruition, and that's, that's one of the reasons I'm running for four more years. Because well, you got you, you should be a shoe in with all the advancements, well, all the jobs coming, the cleanliness. You, uh, your budgets are good. I, I think you've earned it. Well, I ho hopefully the residents realize that. But this, this project I'm really excited about. Uh, now it's far it's n it's far from a done deal, Pat. But I think this is a this is a project that's going to breed new life into a minority economic depressed neighborhood on East St. George's Avenue. Linden and Roselle share a common border, which is East St. George Avenue, uh, which is also a state highway route. I've got to say it's a main drag there. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it's a state highway route 27, and we have two blocks we bought up of dilapidated housing and buildings and we've knocked them down and we only have one more building to acquire and what we I would like to see done is we have a need for a new police headquarters uh, our old our police headquarters is in the city hall it's old uh, city halls cramped what I'd like to do is move our police headquarters into this two block area now what better benefit to to revitalize a neighborhood than to have a police department there with cops coming and going. Uh, well, that's work. your zero crime rate there area you when go. you have the and police that, station there. And that's what would be a revitalization to this neighborhood. But we're going to even couple it further. Uh, I've talked to Mayor Holly from the uh, city of Roselle. He's interested in sharing services with courts. Uh, what we're going to do is have one court. It's going to be for Linden. It's going to be for Roselle in part, part of this social justice complex attached to the police headquarters. Now, is this civil or criminal courts? No, this is criminal courts. Oh, you, we should have Judge Brasso court. here from Hudson County he this dying to get a new courthouse. Court. <laughs> this is municipal <laughs> court. Uh, so we're going to share those services. We're also going to share part of the building for OEM, Office of Emergency Management. I'm trying to convince Mayor Holly to share dispatching services also. And we're going to also couple that with a public private partnership we're going to get some social services uh, people interested in attaching to the building like who well Trinitas Hospital they want to have emergency care uh, and again with them they'll be able to contribute so much amount of money to reduce our costs. well if you can't get them I can talk to Barnabas Health for you well Barry I'm, I'm willing to talk to everybody but we've been put a we, little heat under them people we, we'll we get can big Barry in go ahead we'll get them moving uh, we're also going to talk into United Way and having a family success center where we're going to have a daycare building attached. We're going to have a jobs training building attached. Uh, we're going to have some social services attached to it. Again, so it's a public-private partnership. I'm sure which, United Way would jump in on yeah, this which immediately. Would, I'm, I've been talking to Mr. Horn from United Way. He, we also had, a, as a matter of fact, and I'm very proud of this, Pat, uh, I went down to Trenton, uh, had an audience with the Department of Community Affairs Commissioner. Uh, ah, DCA, yes. Uh, he assigned a planning team to this project, free of charge, uh, and they've been planning this whole project, budgeting it, and, and we're ready to release the final uh, study of this whole concept. And it's going to happen. It's, it's going to happen. It's just going to take a little time. Well, when you get drawings on this, I'd love to see the building. Yep. Now, now I got one other thing to add. You just reminded me. Uh, the DCA, with, on the Bob Tessier, who was the charge of the planning, made contact with the New Jersey Institute of Technology, 
they designed, they had students design about 10 different build, buildings with these uh, developments that I mentioned. A and it really came out nice. And uh, we, had, we had a project where they had all the models set up with the various architectural well, designs. I'm extremely confident we're going to be working together for the next four years, you guesting on this show. So I'm sure we'll get to see all those well, drawings. I hope so. Now, when is the election day? The election day is November 4th. Uh, I'm running again for my third term. I've been the mayor for the last two four-year terms. Uh, I've been in politics since 1994. I was a councilman for the 10th Ward in the city of Linden until 2007 when I won the seat. Now, you're a cop by profession, aren't you? I'm a retired police officer. Well, you officer, chased down yeah. somebody not long ago. Oh, I called yeah, you yeah, a couple yeah, years yeah. ago. You chased a guy down with it. You know, it's... <laughs> Pat, it's like that old fire horse. You hear the <laughs> bell ring you gotta and go you out take there. off. I, I happen to be riding around a little bit uh, in, a, in, mm -hmm. in my mm -hmm. vehicle, and I'm, it's a, there's a, uh, a police radio in it. And I heard a shop, they were chasing shoplifters who tried to steal about $2,000 worth of uh, materials from uh, one of the stores. And they were chasing them all over the neighborhood. And, and then I heard them say they're chasing them on Commerce Road. Now, Commerce Road is a dead end street, and I know it dead ends into the back of the cemetery. So I came into the front of the cemetery figuring either they're going to catch him or he's going to hop over the fence. And lo and behold, he did hop over the fence. Uh, I reported over the radio, I'm chasing a guy. Uh, I'm yelling at him, stop. Uh, uh, police department, I lied a little <laughs> bit. Uh, I chased him for about a block. Uh, he wound up get, being so exhausted because I'm a runner and I run. So he wound up turning around, giving up. <laughs> but the funny part of the story was uh, my police training comes in. I throw him on the ground. I put him on his uh, face down on the ground. I put my knee in his back. I take one hand, put it behind his back. I take the other hand, put it behind his back. You got no cops. I got no handguns. <laughs> I knew that was what coming. That, what do I do now? <laughs> <laughs> Well, Fortunately, the cops come and we're able to... So when you heard them. the call, you like you take your old police hat out, put it on, <laughs> say, I'm back? Well, what are you, you going to do? So yeah. you're up, it's the, third, the 4th of November. Who, yes. Who's running with you? You got a running uh, mate? Yeah, I got a running mate, a council president, Jackie Williams, uh, African-American female, uh, and also I have a 10th Ward uh, candidate, Grant Kakowski. Uh, he's an Army reservist. He served two tours in Iraq. Uh, he's got a young family. He's interested in helping the city, and uh, I feel very confident that when we all get elected on the 4th, uh, we're going to have a good team to give a new direction to the good direction. Richie, the if the people of Linden have their eyes open and they see everything that's occurred, I mean, the cleanliness, the garbage cans being empty, the jobs and all the businesses that moved in there, that's bringing revenue in, eventually that brings down the taxes. All these jobs will bring down any crime numbers you have. I don't know what your crime numbers are. With this many jobs, you're going to bring that down. You've done an excellent job. Do you have the line yet? Row A, row, none of that? Yeah, well, we're running as independents. Independents? So we're row column C. Column C? Yep. This is Richie Gabronker on the November 4th on Election Day, row C. Give him another four years. I'm Pat O'Melia. You're watching the weekly show. Be good, be safe. We'll see you later. <laughs>